Ladies and gentlemen, it is I, Tetra, and welcome back to another cast of the Heroes of the Dorm West Region. Today, we are once again in the round of 16, and we have another matchup. If there are sound issues or anything like that, it is because there was a balance patch, and balance patches are notorious, especially with me, for messing up replays, which also means that you're going to have to wait a bit before the second or third game while I mess up, while I mess with the sound settings to make sure that they are all on the right levels, or at least the levels that sound right-ish, because... I'm obviously not 100% sure, I think I've got it good enough, but we will find out. So without further ado, let me get you into the game. So, ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce you to the teams on the left-hand side. It is going to be the University of Nevada, Las Vegas, otherwise known as UNLV, or as I shall call them, Vegas, because I need a short name to call people. And... Playing for Vegas, we have KKX, who is playing the Zagara. We have Brightwing being played by Hyperion. We have Rayna being played by Jaro. Jaina being played by Samurai Jack. And ETC being played by Kalzu. And on the right-hand side, it is going to be How Play, which is the Washington University, I believe. Western Washington University, who we shall just call Washington and attempt to not make Red versus blue jokes. So, playing for Western Washington, we have Greymane being played by Jahishno. Uh, Jahishno. Gonna mess that up throughout the game. Tassadar being played by Moonrise. Johanna being played by War God 3. Rhaegar being played by Captain Misclick. And Lunara being played by Flashlight. I am Tetra. And I'm here to bring you the game to the best of my abilities. Prepare so, they are battle. spawning in once again. Let me know the sound settings. I'm trying to do my best with them because of balance patches, but Blizzard replays just do not react well to that at all. I do have a live stream chat up because I was doing this recording live, so hopefully they will help me out as well. And I also apologize for having to use the Blizzard overlay because that's the one it defaults to and you can't change it once you're in game. So now that we have all of the preamble down, let's actually go over some of the talents. Brightwing, starting off with the regular teleport build. What we expected, we can't actually hover over here. We have to hover over down here. So we will bring this up for now and take up almost all of the screen. Brightwing starting off with the regular teleport build and Rayner with that lovely season marksman going to be getting those stacks. Not a very close together map of this one, but there's a reasonable amount of time spent in lane that he can use dealing with all of this. We see Greymane once again starting off with the Q build. This is once again before the patch we just had that had it nerfed. And Rhaegar taking the talent that is identical icon-wise to the other one, so I have to look. It's the Electric Charge. Taking that extra radius so we will be able to see a little bit more AoE damage. We're going to be dropping that onto Johanna as much as he can to get all the damage out that way. So for now, we see the big group up. Still five people in lane for uh, still five people in lane for Western Washington here, but they're finally beginning to split off. Rhaegar makes it down here before any XP is lost. Tassadar might be a bit late. He's actually already lost one minion. Will he make it in time for the second? No, he gets in time for the third though. So we'll stock in the XP there, but they missed out a little bit of XP. And as such, they will fall a little bit behind Vegas who are going to continue pushing in as best as they can. So, Western Washington continue to push in, or how play, as we can also call them, as their team name. Greymane diving in, looking for some aggression. ETC coming in with the side. He took the extra range on his power side, so he wants to try and catch Captain Mystic. Good body blocking by Kalzu. He is able to take him down, but Jahisho coming in for the counter kill, but sacrifices himself in the process. A two for one going over to Vegas here. Very nicely played by them, able to take a good amount of control. And everyone else has uh, Lunara left down here alone for Western Washington. In the meantime, ETC moving up to the mid lane. He's going to continue to push uh, to help Rayner here, who's just been building up his stacks throughout this entire time. So we uh, can I look at Cattle Mode here? I don't know. Control Shift K? Nope. Well, can't load up Cattle Mode. I do not know the button for it, unfortunately. So we will not be able to keep an eye on his stacks. In the meantime, we see Hyperion still just dueling with Tassadar in this lane over here. Neither of them gaining a huge advantage. Tassadar has pushed up a little bit more, but with ETC hanging around here, Tassadar does have to measure shift, so it shouldn't do too much, but he can at least give Hyperion some more breathing room. 
It's not your right jack here, though. It's going to be some good damage, but once again, Dimensional Shift. The Polymorph, though, preventing Dimensional Shift, but you can only CC for so long. Moonrise, Dimensional Shift gets out and will actually be healed up and ready to make his way over to this tribute in time. So that's going to be pretty good timing for him, whereas ETC having to mount up. Brightwing will be able to teleport, so that's not a huge deal for them. But now, Kekex is being pushed back, so he's not able to get too much control and help out his team in the moment. We see Jahisho going for it. Will be denied via Roaches because Jaina did miss. In comes the Blizzard for a little bit of poke damage. They're just denying this for now as best they can. They're still split up. Brightwing still soaking XP, which is going to give Vegas a little bit of XP lead. Jack goes way too far forward, though. Gets poisoned. The healer is nowhere near. Brightwing coming in for the teleport, and she will come in in time and save Samurai Jack. And because of that, we do see the tribute, though, going over to Western Washington. So they will take a bit of control in this game and the XP lead still pretty even despite Brightwing being, uh, having soaked that top lane for so long. So a very good job by Western Washington to keep up in this game for the moment. Nice skill in Cocktail by Greymane there getting a bit of poke. Brightwing did take the unstable, the unstable Polymorph there so it gets the extra damage when the Polymorph ends that lovely explosion with a bit of AOE damage. And she is coming back up to the top lane to once, once again continue to duel with Tassadar. Zagara did go for that Envenom Spine, but is currently taking all the damage. There's the poison. She's on her creep. She does have reconstitution, so maybe the regen will save her from the poison there. Very nice use of that creep. The Gillian Cocktail does not have enough range to kill her. And Kekex will get out of here, but will still be a very long way away from this tribute. Jaina. Also quite far away, seeing she did start from that bot lane. They are all on the way. Brightwing, once again, has the power to teleport in. For now, it's playing very aggressively in the lane. Wants to try and get as much XP as possible, whereas ETC is just denying this. He's on his own, however. The rest of the team has not arrived. He's managed to position himself quite nicely, though, to get a good angle. Samurai Jack has been found by Greymane again, but Greymane now has to deposition himself so that he cannot get focused on by four people. Goes into Samurai Jack again, gets a good cocktail on everyone there. And that is a lot of damage coming out from Western Washington trying to push back to Las Vegas and they're doing a lot of aggression. Doro has his uh, passive prop so he will lose any of that extra healing and has to rely purely on Brightwing for the moment until it is back off cooldown again which will be a while. Gilly Cocktail once again doing damage. Moonrise will get this tribute and that's two tributes over to Western Washington. And this is very interesting, Western Washington looking very strong at the objective and the map control game, but considering that we already saw two kills straight away go over to uh, to Las Vegas, it's very cool to see Western Washington bring it back so quickly, just not letting those early kills get to them, and they're keeping control, they're not getting picked off again, it's been a very long time since they have lost a hero, and they are looking very solid right now, Zagara though, has so Zagara is also one of the heroes who's managed to not die, but has done a great job with that by using her creep to help counter the Lunara, who has just been pushed back behind the wall, two versus one. She doesn't have a huge amount of chance, but she is about to get reinforcements. Greymane and Rhaegar will arrive. Greymane jumping into the minions, just make sure he doesn't get ganked and to help him push more aggressively into the lane. And of course, he can use that Q and the uh, Rhaegar lightning shield to help clear out those uh, creep tumors as quick as he can. Next objective is ready. If Western Washington are able to grab this, they will have a curse onto Las Vegas here. And we will see if that's going to make a difference. They're beginning to push in. Nice Blizzard catches both onto Johanna, who is able to tank a bit of it with her iron skin and avoid that slow. But Jarrow already on the point. The Wisp comes in, is killed off, and Rhaegar denies with the Totem Lightning Shield. ETC not getting his stun. Tazadar has now arrived with his team. Jarrow once again going in, gets denied via the Storm. The Blizzard dropping a lot of damage. Roaches in the back line and so much damage coming out from this Lunara. Forcing them all to disengage. Teleport comes in with that face shield. Kalzu getting focused. He gets taken down. West of Washington pushing through here. KKX getting focused. They want to take down Las Vegas here and get a huge advantage. Hyperion using that lack of wall to his advantage actually to get out of danger a lot quicker. And we will see Captain Misclick grabbing the tribute. That's going to be a curse onto Las Vegas at the six and a half minute mark and that is a big deal for them so they can now begin to go aggressively and they're going to go aggressively into this bot lane where there's actually three heroes they need to be careful blizzard hits captain misclick he takes a huge amount of damage there's the polymorph but he is getting out and now it's kaklex and samurai jack who are in a bit of danger kaklex gets pulled in but he is going to survive the poly the teleport comes in once again giving that face shield over to kaklex 
keeping him alive and keeping him sustained for the moment. And Captain Mystic is able to grab the fountain, but so much damage coming out from Jada. He gets picked off by the Zagara. Very nice finish there, and that gives heroics over to both teams now with Las Vegas just picking theirs up thanks to that kill. We see the Varang more Hyperion, the Mosh hit. And you can see is going aggressive onto Flashlight here, doing his best poke as he can. He can't do much, he is under four, but the fort is still disabled via Curse. Blink heal on the right wing. Rainer pushing forward aggressively. Ring of Frost on the Jaina. Rainer going to be pulling back for now. Whereas on the side of Western Washington, we do see the standard stuff. Bless Shield, Ancestral Healing, Thorn would Divine, the Force Wall, and the Go for the Throat. So they're able to take a lot of extra control in this game. For now, they're just pushing in to the, uh, through the mid lane as best they can. They were able to take down the fort in the top lane and they've now left it to help continue putting pressure on this mid lane. And they won't be able to get the tower for now, but they'll be able to come back for it later. It's already taken a lot of damage. Bot lane also very exposed with only one tower remaining. Jahishno uh, just holding this lane for the moment, just waiting for his opportunity to strike. We see Reyna getting healed up. He will sustain for the moment. And uh, they're both, both teams just looking for an opportunity to engage right now, seeing as they are even on levels. And Jada was found in this bot lane and killed off by Greymane. Very nice job by him. Completely missed that happening, but he was able to jump in and kill her off so quickly. So a really nice job by him. He has still gone for the full cocktail build, so he's able to drop a very large amount of burst. And it's only going to get worse once he gets that concentrate blast. Tassadar has been found by Zagara on the top lane. His shields and dimensional shift will prevent a huge amount of damage from going down onto him and Storm, of course, as we see, helping him clear up the lanes a lot. We're seeing a lot of, ta we've seen uh, Tastar a lot in the games that we cast from Heroes of the Dawn so far. Seems to be very popular, but uh, like the American style, we see him as a secondary support alongside Rhaegar or alongside a uh, Tyrande we've seen. Uh, that's what we seem, seem to see the most. Captain Miskic not able to grab the tower thanks to the poly polymorph of Hyperion. Very nice job by him. Jaina scouting out the boss. Takes a lot of damage from Flashlight. Brightwing coming in to make sure that she is okay, which she will be. Kalzu and Joro just finishing off these uh, bruiser camps in the mid lane while Flashlight continues to harass so much damage onto Jaru. Really, really scary amount of damage there. It is the unfair advantage. Uh, coming in for the Lunara here, and that is just so much extra damage from the slow. The Wild Vigor as well, just the extra auto attack damage. So, we're gonna really be hurting him. We'll see the attack speed on level 16 when she gets to it. But level 13 have actually been hit via uh, via Las Vegas here, so we can actually have a quick look at them before we uh, put the screen away again. Groupies coming in from the East, ETC, improved ice block, the Mutalisk, the Shields Dust coming in from Brightwing, and Rainer. He has a couple options here, but there's a good chance we could see a uh, giant killer to deal with Johanna. We could see the... Uh, we'll see. We'll see what he does pick. There are plenty of options for him. But for now, he is holding back. So we'll put this away and we'll have a look once he brings it up. So we see Western Washington already grouping up here, looking to put some aggression on and try and take this area before anyone has a chance to react. We see Samurai Jack getting zoned, KKX also being zoned, ETZ coming in with the Moshko though, denied instantly by the Blessed Shield. Very nice there. Ring of Frost catches everyone though, ETZ continuing to push in. That was a beautiful Ring of Frost, but Kalzu still killed the ball, catches two. It's currently a one for zero in favor. Oh, Las Vegas, they want more, they get War Gods too, and they're actually getting all the kills here. Kalzu finally gonna drop, but so does Rhyming and Jahisto. And that was a three for two in favor of Las Vegas. They get their first tribute of the game, and they are beginning to retake control of this game. They're looking good, they're still uh, keeping up on XP. Their opponents are ahead, but they're keeping up, and with those kills under their name. They are looking good. It's currently seven kills to Las Vegas to the five coming in from Western Washington, despite the fact Western Washington have a pretty big structure advantage with that fort down and all the towers down around here so that they can push in whenever they get a curse or whenever they get an objective. Right now, a trap being set up around the boss. They're not showing, so that's very interesting. They expect Western Washington to come here and check to see if they are here. And, well, they were, but they've moved away. The Wisp. Coming in, but actually Vraker just beat the Wisp there. Just, it was like, no, I don't want free scouting. They found Zagara, though, a bit far forward. Good force. Well, they tried to body block her in, but she's under four. Can they catch her? The Feral Lunge will allow Rhaegar to catch up if he can. Tassadar gets the storm, and Zagara is going to be close here. In comes Jada for the slow, and Zagara will escape. Very nice job there. Oh, Ring of Frost comes in. They want to try and catch Captain Misclick here, and they will get him. 
Uh, very, very greedy here by West of Washington, really throwing away the lead that they were able to pick up that little bit earlier. We're seeing ETC from Las Vegas running straight up to the tribute. His team are on the way, but at least with him here already, they can make sure that no one is able to cap this. Not even going to cap it. He wants to just deny it away from West of Washington because his team has the numbers advantage. And there we go. They are pushing in. They want to try and get anyone for this. Lunara poking from afar though. And we're going to see West of Washington just try to deny this as best they can while avoiding the fight as much as they can. There's the blind and the storm. Maybe both of them were a bit unnecessary. Lunara dropping so much damage with that Thornwood find. The Hyperion meant to zone, but they're just tanking it up for now. Lunara coming in very aggressively onto Samurai Jack and Jaro. Jaro getting healed from his trait, but he's still going to get survived, actually. He will survive. ETC coming in, finds Lunara. Wants to try and finish her off, but she gets out. Bless shield from the back, doing so much damage. The Hyperion catches too, though, and Kalzu can just drop his Welsh here. He's going to do so. Catches pretty much everyone. The damage is good from Lunara, though, who's trying to focus down the Zagara in the back line. Kalzu will live. The Ancestral will keep the Grey Maid alive too, and they're turning it around west of Washington. Even though the Moor and the Mosh landed, the damage just was not there because Zagara was distracted. Brywing's down. ETC the only one to survive, and we will see Western Washington taking control and grabbing that tribute. They can now do the boss as well. They have everyone they need here, and they will begin that as well. ETC just going to soak XP, keep his team in as best they can. Level 16s were available for Western Washington. We do see that Concentrate Blast, like we said, the Dimensional Warp, the uh, Imposing Presence. I believe that is the Rising Storm, and we have the extra attack speed. Actually, I don't think that is the extra attack speed, is it? That is the extra attack range, I was correct. I didn't think it was that color. So yeah, the extra attack range coming in from Lunara, so she can now poke from even further away and deny tributes that little bit easier. But level 16 finally available for the side of Las Vegas. And they have the Echo Pedal, the Bull's Eye, the extra stun coming in, Bouncy Dust, the Brood Expansion, and Jaina yet to pick, but I would expect the Northern Exposure will bring it up if we see uh, when we see her pick it. But for now, one boss already taken is being cleared up by uh, University of Las Vegas, whereas Western Washington just going to annihilate this boss as well, and that will give both under their control and keep uh, Las Vegas busy for quite a while here. They finally finished this one off, but now they have another one to deal with. It does have a fort to go through, however, and that will give uh, Western Washington only a little bit of time, not as much as they had with the Golem in this top lane. And we will see Las Vegas reacting to this, but they do need to react to this mid lane as well. Jaina still yet to pick her 16, just holding it for the moment. But this fort is going to go down, so they should probably just leave it and deal with the boss. But the issue with that is, what are Western Washington going to do? The second they see so many people in the bot lane, that's right. They're just going to continue to push the mid lane and continue to keep the aggression on. They have so much siege potential with this Lunara. Just the huge amount of damage that she can drop. So, as you can see, War Gods getting stunned up here. Kalzu. Very out of position here. Takes so much damage from Lunara. Lunara not calling the more either. And there's no mosh to follow up on the board. Nice pull in via Johanna there to try to take down Samurai Jack. But Samurai Jack caught by the forceful Hyperion trying to blink heal out. But he's focused by Greymane who gets the kill. And here comes the trace. Samurai Jack goes down. Jaro the only one left. He gets taken down. Jahishno uh, able to survive. He was getting focused but he will be able to tank this through. And that is a full team wipe. Coming in from Western Washington University. They will push through. They get the keep. And they will push onto the core. And that is going to be GG. And Western Washington will take game number one of this best of three series in the round of 16 of the uh, Heroes of the Dorm Western Regions. So they will take that down. And a very nice showing there. They're able to finish the game at 14 to 8. But it is in no way over. It appears to be a having some kind of episode down there in the bottom corner there. But it is not over yet because we did see the University of Las Vegas put up, University of Nevada Las Vegas put up a hell of a fight there. So we'll see if uh, they can bring it back in game number two, which I will begin to load up for you now. But I do need to make sure that teams are on the right side and upload the score, update the scores and readjust the audio the second I load in. Due to the fact that, like I said, it's a replay, it breaks, and it's probably going to even log me out here. So you may have to wait a little, and I apologize for the people in the stream and on the VOD for me making them wait for this. It's just how the business works. Yep, I'm logged out. Let me re-log in. Wonderful. Log in. Ah, it's wonderful to deal with. All right, and here, and here, game number two, load. Yes, I'm aware it will disconnect me from Battle.net. I just want to get this going. 
All right, so it won't take me too long to update the score. Assume if the teams are on the right side, it will take me no time at all to upload the score. Uh, update the score. So let's see what we can do. Uh, looks like they're on the right. They're on the same sides. Excellent. That saves me so much time. I just need to change the number the second we uh, load in. And loading, loading, pause. Adjust the sound settings. That is the very first thing we need to do. Music off, sound 25%. I really hope that this is an okay level for everyone. I haven't seen any complaints in the chat. Accept, accept, hide this, uh, this, and this. There we go. Lovely. That should be right. Let's jump to here. And I do need to tab out because I need to update the score. Boosh and boosh. Lovely. That should be all good. So, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to game number two of the Heroes of... Oh, wait. Hold up. Hold up. Need to push some buttons. Mouse the keyboard. Invert drag scroll. Done. All right. So, here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to game number two of the Heroes of the Dorm Western Region, round of 16. And on the left-hand side, we have the University of Nevada Las Vegas in the blue trunks playing for them. We have Rhaegar being played by Hyperion, Leoric being played by Samurai Jack, Greymane being played by Jaro, Lunara being played by Kekex, ATC being played by Kalzu, and playing against them, currently 1-0 up. It is the Western Washington University, otherwise known as Halplay. So, playing for them, we have Thrall being played by Jahishno. Taranda being played by Captain Misclick. Li Ming being played by Moonrise. Johanna being played by War Gods, and Tassadar being played by Flashlight. I'm Tetra, I'm going to be bringing you the games in the best way that I know how. Sound sounds not too loud, so that's a good start. Had a lovely drink there, and let's have a look at the starting talents. <coughs> Excuse me, so we have the Q build coming in from Brawl, we see that quite often, and the uh, Eternal Re the Condemned talent, which is the Night Takes Pawn. Coming in from Johanna, not too surprising there, it's a uh, quite small map, clearing out the lanes makes a lot of sense. Greymane though, we have a very interesting talent, he did take the wolf heart here, so he gets the cooldown reduction for every time he autos. So he's going to be able to use his uh, his inner beast a lot more often, but it's a quite interesting not going for that cube off to start with. Once again, this is before the patch, so he hasn't had that auto attack buff yet, and the natural perspective coming in, electric charge from Greymane, other than that. Fairly standard reanimation from the Auric, etc. So for now, both teams mostly hovering around the mid lane with the odd person split off through the top or bot lane. The Auric just going to start clearing as quick as he can. You can see so many people, but a lot of damage coming down onto Jaru and Kalzu. Both will get out. Li Ming, though, continuing to do a lot of damage, just poking in and bursting everyone. Samurai Jack being zoned out. <coughs> Excuse me. And has to back away from this. It is the four-man roaming squad versus the 1-1 one, one in at the bottom lane. Jahishno getting outpushed for the moment because it's just single auto attacks that KKX is able to do. But with that Frost Wolf resilience, okay, uh, Jahishno going to be very good at this. Going to be able to sustain this quite well. And you can see him just getting a lot of poke damage himself with that Q. The fact that Lunara does not have as good a sustain as he does. Moonrise just continuing to poke here. The roaming squad still roaming. Already clearing the waves very quickly with the help of that Knight Takes Pawn. Add just the huge extra damage that they have from Tassadar and even Li Ming when she throws in her glow, her orb from the side. Nice hits the back of the minions, wiping out pretty much all of their health straight away. There's the Condemn, once again, just working this out. ETC goes very aggressive there onto Captain Misclick, who's tagging his way through. He's getting drained, gets shielded from Tassadar, and he gets out. And immediately, we see Western Washington turning around onto Samurai Jack, who is able to use his Wraith Walk to get out of there. Very well played by both teams, but neither one able to pick up the kills and good protections and good work from supports and the warriors with their positioning so once again we see samuel attack getting focused he gets stunned and killed off he already used his wraith walk to escape the first time and was still on cooldown and as such he will get taken out here so western washington taking the advantage with the first blood you can see a bit big xp lead for them and with that roaming 
they're able to just continue to pick it up as much as possible. Li Ming, this is before her uh, building damage now, so you can see her poking buildings whenever she can, doing as much damage to them so that she can get it working down. She doesn't have to worry a huge amount about mana. She did take the mana regen talent at 25%. In the meantime, Jehishno still once again has been out poking Lunara only barely. You can see he did have to fountain. Has been out poking her a little bit. Lunara went with a nimble wisp and just doing everything that she can. You can see with the extra dash. Triumvate for the Li Ming here, getting that extra cooldown reduction on max range of the globe. Everyone else, fairly standard stuff. There's still the cocktail coming in for Greymain despite not taking perfect aim. This is what we saw a little bit when the perfect aim was bugged, but not too bad to see here. We see, uh, we see Thrall just continuing to duel here as much as he can. He's already forced KKX back. And that is the advantage of the Frost Wolf Resilience. You're able to do a huge amount here. I believe that's fer that's a Feral Heart. Let me double check that. Yeah, that's Feral Heart coming in for the uh, Rhaegar here. Kalzu getting chased down. They get pulled in by the Condemned. Stun does not hit Jaro. That's who they were aiming for. And such Jaro. Well, he gets hit by the orb, but he's able to pull back after taking a huge amount of damage. And Western Washington not able to pick up the kill that they were aiming for there, but is able to force Greymane to use his fountain and to force him out of position here. But ETC, he wants vengeance. He wants to try and get someone. Gets a full four man stun. There's the face belt as well. Huge amounts of damage coming in from KKX. They focus down Samurai Jack. He gets taken out. And that was very, very aggressive and very well played there via the side of University of Las Vegas. That's uh, right, University of Nevada, Las Vegas. And that wasn't Samurai Jack that died. My mistake. But still, very nice pickup by then. That ETC start was beautiful, and the follow-up was still good. Both teams still continuing to posture around this turning point. Both want their opportunity to get in their gems. Nice to die from the Owl there. Coming in from Toronto, who did have to demount Captain Misclick on the way back to his team after remounting, helping out as best as he can. So both teams just looking for an opportunity. It's currently 25 gems in favor of Las Vegas to zero. In favor of uh, in favor of Western Washington, Kalzu gets the start of the Tastar. Dimensional shift though, good ability. Flashlight already repositioned. KKX gets hit hard there by Moonrise, who's able to send out that orb. And KKX having to stay a little bit further back now. He's still poking. 23 gems currently on the uh, currently on the Johanna alone. And Thrall on 24. He's trying to out-duel Samurai Jack, who's just trying to prevent him from turning in here. Kalzu getting zoned out, and that's going to be the opportunity for Johanna to move in for a turn in with Jahishno. And once she could have really come to the top here when they had that zoning opportunity, but instead not able to get her coin, her gems turned in for the moment. But 16 available for, sorry, 7 available for both teams. We see the Ossium Renewal. The cleanse coming in from the Raygar, something we didn't see in the other Heroes of the Dawn game that we did cast. Other than that, fairly talented. Other than Lee Ming's actually going for a full globe talent. Uh, full globe build, flashlight, getting focused down. Kalzu gets the start. There's the L and the heal coming in from Captain Mystic. And flashlight will escape here. Very nicely played. Good work from the two supports protecting each other. Moonrise will be denied here. Let's actually have a look at his build. He did go for the Z's Vengeance. Getting focused down, but is able to position himself out of there. Hyperion also takes a lot of damage, but is able to get out. But yeah, it's just the Zeus Vengeance, which is the initial 25% damage to enemies further away and 25% less to enemies up close. So it is an orb build coming in from the Li Ming here. We'll have to keep an eye on that and see how much damage she can do. We do not see this very often at all. Most players and teams preferring the Magic Missile builds. In the meantime, for now, we finally see Jahishno going in for his turns, as well as War Gods, who has currently 32 gems. Samurai Jack just getting focused down here. He may just get killed off here. Can they finish him? No, no mana left on Jahishno, so he's not able to use his lightning for the final snipe if it had been off cooldown. Flashlight's also continuing to poke. The uh, Greymane still continuing to be annoying. He has that uh, auto hit on the Q now, so he's able to just basically throw out Gillian Cocktails however he likes. For now, War Gods just looking for some opportunity to try and catch someone and just to help their lanes. The rotation squad is still rotating. And finally, we see uh, the Oraki is still down here with Thrall. They thought that he might be a better fit than the Lunara, but it's really not working. Whereas the rest of Western Washington continuing to push in aggressively. We see Kalzu out of position here, but he's managed to body block Moonrise. The poison is good from the from the Lunara. So much damage coming out, but Hyperion is now the focus as well. He's able to wolf form and he will escape. Very nice kill there 
from Las Vegas. They're going to be able to turn onto this web weaver and take it down very quickly and then rotate to the one in the mid lane. But it actually looks like they want blood. They want a kill first. They already have one. They want another. Li Ming will be back quite soon. They do not catch anyone. So they're going to be able to head to the mid lane and begin working on this. Lunara being the first to get there. While Thrall just continuing to do what we've been seeing all game. Poking Samurai Jack. Getting him to just work his health down and use most of his mana on drains. While the Frostborn Brazilian keeps Jehishno a little bit more sustained. Mini Waves getting killed off by War Gods who has come to join his team. Everyone else in the mid lane just poking from range. They don't want to get caught out. They know the web is going to die. They're just putting on the pressure. And they know it is risky because level 10 has been hit by Las Vegas who are using those kills. As in a big way to get that XP, we have the Ancestral Healing, the Entomb coming in from Leoric, the Stage Dive for ETC. We will keep an eye out for that. Thorn would find for Lunara, go for the throat on the Grey Mane, and we will keep an eye out for these abilities. Level 10 coming very soon for Western Washington. Keep an eye on it. Kalzu going in quite aggressively. No moderate. Remember, there's the Entomb. Only catches Johanna. They're going to try and get Captain Biscuit, but they need to disintegrate. There's a lot of damage because level 10 has just been hit here, but that's almost all. In fact, it is all the heroics used immediately by Western Washington. They're able to get the kill out of it. Very nice. Disintegrate. Off cooldown again. Hyperion having to back up here. Has very little health left. Kalzu getting chased. He uses his dash. Able to dodge out the wolf. And he will escape from here without getting picked off. But those heroics in, in perfect timing. We see the Sundering, the Shadow Stalk, the uh, Disintegrate, the Less Shield, and the Force Wall coming in from Western Washington. Stage dive still yet to be used by ETC. And the turn in did happen, however, for the side of Las Vegas. So they're able to take that they're gonna be able to counter push here with these web weavers as best they can. However, the lanes split up, looking a little bit better for Western Washington at the moment. They are just in control of the lanes, with Thrall the only one down here. But the question is, if the uh, Las Vegas do group up on a Web Weaver, how are Western Washington going to respond? Because that's look, looking like what they want to do right now. They're a bit split, using the Vulnerable to help focus down this Web Weaver, Tass, and Taranda. Whereas we see Li Ming using her Disintegrate to try and focus this one down. So they're just dealing with them very split up. But with the four-man push, we'd like to see a lot of damage go down onto these buildings from uh, Las Vegas here. They really want to make the most out of this Web Weaver, but with three heroes here, four, three heroes to four, they're playing very passively. They want to put the aggression on, but they're not actually playing that aggressive. They have their heroics up. Force Wall will be up very soon as well. Kalzu going a bit further forward, just doing any damage they can. They're going to be able to take down that fountain. And, well, they didn't actually get that much out of that Neva team to get a fort, though. These towers in the mid lane will now be focused down by Las Vegas. The orb still coming in from the Lee Ming, still going with that build. In comes DTC. Once again, no mosh pit to follow up on this dash that he did. It is just single stuns. He just wants to set up for his team, set up for an two, maybe, and let that be happening. Jehishno still getting healed up by his proper res resilience, whereas uh, the Yorick relying on his drains and the Ossian renewal to get his health back that way. Grey uh, Rhaegar, sorry, coming to the bot lane, grabbing some health so that he can stay healthy and heal his team up because he has the mana from that as well. Samurai Jack, very out of position here. He's draining. He uses his rifle to get out of there. To the back. He does have a stage dive, comes in, hits no one. The Entomb is beautiful positioning-wise. They're able to catch the Taranda. The Ancestral does not save the Auric, but Taranda's still out of position. Sundering hits so many people. Taranda getting focused down. Taranda chasing, but they're not able to catch a Thrall in the back line. Getting body blocks, but he's able to pull back, and that's a one for zero in favor of Western Washington. A beautiful Entomb with no follow-up damage. They weren't able to get the kills there. And everyone on the side of Western Washington does live. They have 76 gems between them. And they're using them immediately for returning. And they won't get it for now. Kalsu with the denials. But they will get it eventually. They can just split up and send some people to top. Some people leave at bot. And that's that's what we see. We see Wargos with 16, which is enough. Jahishno with 20, which is enough. And they're able to get the turn. In, and they're going to be able to regroup here. Flashlight a little bit split up. But he's still completely fine. He is still in control. So, they're just going to be back, get health, get mana while the Web Weavers do spawn and then group up for an aggressive push. Looks like top lane is the one they want to put focus on. Leo just clearing the minions in the bottom lane so that they don't have to worry about it so much. In comes Johanna immediately, very aggressively, with a high amount of damage. 13's Thir available for both teams. It is Glass Cannon 
on the side of Li Ming. So she's going to be dropping huge amounts of damage on anyone she hits with these abilities. In comes Flashlight. He's here. Leoric, the only one not here in this fight. Once again, a Condemned doing a bit of damage. Disintegrate not doing much. Stage Dive comes in. Good stun on a lot of people there. But the Shadow Storm heals up a lot of that damage. Sundering hits everyone. KK is getting focused down. He gets Ancestral. He will survive. But we will not see Rhaegar so lucky. Ancestral, his teammate, does to save them at the sacrifice of himself and as such he does fall as does the fort it was a good engagement but they did not follow up on it the sundering was too good and the auric still not here he's able to deal with the web weaver in the bot lane but now is still dealing with the one in the mid lane and still loses the fort so they're able to lose the fort uh two of the forts and well the web weaver in the top lane is still alive they lost a hero as well the condemned so they got a lot of damage to tie the wave from the uh web weaver doing so much damage it's great almost catches kx and he is able to escape, but only barely for the moment. And seeing Samurai Jack finally arriving to help his team. He is not able to catch anyone, though. And with uh, Lunara and Greymane still in the base, wouldn't have been that good if he had. So having a look at some of the 13 talents we see, we see the unfair advantage coming in for Lunara, doing a lot of extra damage. Actually, yeah, I think, I'm pretty sure that's what that is. Yeah, unfair advantage. We have the On the Prowl, the extra movement speed for Greymane. Very old-fashioned build this is. And we have the Burning Rage coming in from the Johanna and the Leoric. Both of them want to get that little bit of extra damage going when they get into the team fight. Flashlight dropping a shield onto Moonrise in case he gets engaged upon. Being that little bit careful. ATC coming in. There's the Entomb. Catches Jahishko. He immediately sunders. That is so much damage. Shadowsword comes in to give the healing. Hyperion goes down. Kalzu is disintegrated. And Jaro is in the back line. He will escape by the looks of it. Unless he goes in really aggressively here. And he gets taken down. I don't know why he went in. He goes down. They lose so many gems. And that is really bad news. We're seeing KKX will live. He's able to be back. But that was a 4 for 0. Coming in there. And for now we are going to see uh, Western Washington push in for the fort. And that is really, really well played by them. They will push. They will push in. They can't end the game with these respawn timers. But they are looking so solid to push in and take a commanding lead into the late game. They have 20 gems in their inventories. Only four more needed for the next turn. And there are three available in this mid lane. And then they can just grab them from anywhere else. The next wave that is coming just from here. They can go to top lane and get them. And that will be enough for them to turn in fully. And that will give them their next set of web weavers and continue to keep the pressure on to the University of Nevada, Las Vegas, and Vegas, they're just having trouble with this. They really want to, uh, they really want to fight back, but the fights just aren't going their way. I can't help but feel that, have a look at how much stun we have. We have Sundering, we have, uh, the Blessed Shield, sure, but I can't help but feel that maybe Moshpit would have been the better decision for them. And we see Li Ming not taking Seeker, but still with a Mirror Ball. Still get it once that little bit of extra damage. This is something we also saw in the games we saw previously. That Mirror Ball without the Seeker in another game as well. Who went for, uh, for a full teleport build. In comes Kalzu. Good stuns once again. No more followed up, but there would have been a Thundering at them ready to interrupt that. Huge damage disintegrate takes down Rhaegar. And that is no ancestral available. Greymade tries to escape and gets zapped by Jahishno. And Jahishno chasing forward. Nice knockback from Kalzu. He's taking a lot of damage. Able to uh, power slide his way out of there, though. Now it is Samurai Jack who is getting focused. Here comes the Wraith Walk. And thanks to those hardened bones, he will get out of there without too much trouble. Very well played by them. But they still lost two people. Western Washington still in control. They have enough for the turn in, like we said. And that is going to be yet another set of Web Weavers. And they're going for the boss. A very aggressive play. But with two heroes dead, it's probably going to work out for them unless Kalzu can go for some kind of amazing steal, which won't happen if he's dead. Li Ming comes in for the damage. Kalzu getting focused. He is alive, but has to back out. He would have to stage dive in. Leoric did die, on the other hand, and Kalzu backing up. They still have the boss leash. They did not let it. They still have the boss aggro. They did not let it leash, so it did not despawn thanks to the web weavers and they're going to begin to focus this down no one here to contest this Leoric does see etc not going to risk that stage dive especially against johanna she can just walk in push iron skin and will allow to tank unless she dies here which would have been close but the boss goes over to western washington so they have web weavers and boss mid web weaver already down though very nice job by vegas to clear that up as quick as possible western washington just going for the fountain in the mid lane and then they're moving back to the top lane to help their Webweaver and their boss. The Webweaver already getting worked down by all five members of Vegas. 
and it gets taken out, but the boss is going to put on so much aggression, and the longer they keep him distracted here, the more work in the bot lane that Web Weaver's going to do. In comes Johanna with a lot of damage. The Owl build doing a lot as well, thanks to that Ranger Flashlight. Getting zoned out. Kalzu getting caught in the entomb himself. He stage dives himself out here. The Hyperion is killed off by Johanna, but they trade the kill for the Johanna. But ETC immediately annihilated after stage diving. Joro getting getting chased down here. Moonrise wants the kill. Missiles do miss. And we will see Joro able to get behind the wall. And he will survive. But that's still a two for one. And the boss is still on half health. They need to get some kills here. And they need to kill off that boss. Joro taking so much damage. Let the force wall. Zoning them away from it. There's the disintegrate. Takes down Joro. And now it is just KKX. He's going to be able to take down the boss eventually. But he's getting zoned so much. And that is going to be West of Washington on the core. And a GG coming in here. And that is going to be West of Washington moving on to the round of eight. Very well played by them. Commiserations to the University of Nevada, Las Vegas. But, guys, thank you very much for watching this Heroes of the Dorm replay cast. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll be continuing going through the Western Regionals, and once I have done that, I'll be moving on to the other Regionals. I'm also really excited about the fact they just announced that the bracket drawing will be live on ESPNU, so we will see how that goes. It's going to be interesting to see. For now, though, guys, thank you very much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed the replays. Uh, feel free to discuss the game in the comments section below. It's always cool to look at these games and look out for the new and rising stars in the NA scene, because these guys, they go from here, they can move on to join one of the top teams kind of thing, because these guys are just people from school who have grouped up together to play. So guys, thank you very much for watching, and I will see you all next time.